how long did it take you to accept that you were no longer you? Or who I thought I was, anyway. Uh, I honest, I, I think I was in shock for a couple years. A couple uh, of years? Uh, yeah, in terms of, I can't believe yeah. I'm going to be a public person. I don't find it, um, I don't find it attractive. I didn't feel any sense of satisfaction from that. You right. know, I, I, I'm like the only person who didn't want to be on Oprah. You know, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and you couldn't speak out actually no. for five years because you were still technically employed by the CIA. That's correct. I was. So employed. you were. Mm -hmm. So you were in limbo. You were. Yeah. Kind of. So Joe had to carry all the water for both of us when all the attack, the highly partisan attacks came in. And I could not uh, defend myself, or because as a um, employee of the CIA, you're not permitted to speak publicly. Right, and you were called all kinds of names. All kinds of names. Yeah, uh, beginning with glorified secretary. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was accused of nepotism. I was called a glorified secretary. Uh, Joe was called a liar and a traitor and everything else. And uh, and honestly, the misogyny that that appeared was astonishing. Was astonishing, yeah. yeah. She, oh, she's just a girl. <laughs> she's just a girl, and she really was very, she might, maybe she didn't even really work for the CIA. Or she wasn't covert, that was the she other meme. She definitely wasn't yeah, covert. Yeah, she was not covert. Come on, everyone knew where she worked. Oh, boy. Um, and Joe, your husband, was the first voice of any stature to say that the supposed threat from Saddam was based on false, uh, was be being manipulated to sell the war mm -hmm. in Iraq. Uh, to satisfy an ideological bent by yes. neocons who yes. thought that um, breaking up a state in the Middle East would help Israel. Indeed. And did, would it have? Uh, well, that was the assumption as laid out in the Project for the New American Century, which I think was published in 98. Right. Yeah. Uh, and the idea was to use the vast military resources that we have in the United States to, in an in imperial fashion, really, to uh, make sure that Israel was kept safe. And in the Project for the New American Century, they call for something, an, an attack along the lines of Pearl Harbor that would precipitate then an opportunity to put this into play. And lo and behold, when 9-11 came along, it was, you know, all they had to do was dust it off and, and Pull it right out and put it into, into put it in play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When did you recognize that there was a much broader agenda at play uh, at beyond uh, and join the fight with Joe? Well, as I mentioned, watching Colin Powell was a transformative experience for me mm -hmm. in that up until that time, my head was so deep into operations. I was so busy making sure that this person was here and there was money here and we need a translator here and get on the plane over there, you know, very operationally sure. oriented. And all of a sudden I'm watching this on TV and I'm stepping back and going, huh, this really is not adding up. Right. Uh, and of course, you know, no WMD was found. But I will tell you, when we went to war in, those immediate, in the immediate aftermath in March 2003, I thought the CIA, I thought we had failed miserably. I thought that it could easily have been there and we missed it. We mm. missed a cache. We didn't, we should have spoken to this person instead of that person because mm. there was so much information coming in and coming. you have to sort through it. Yeah. Uh, and so I thought we, we've just completely failed. When you finally agreed, or when you were finally called to testify before a House committee in 2007, uh, and now you knew that you're visually you were going to be known all around the world, were you finally scared of something? <laughs> I was terrified. I thought I was going to fall out of my shoes. Um, uh, when you were asked to appear before a congressional committee, I'm pretty sure the only answer is, when? <laughs> And uh, I had never spoken publicly at that point, uh, and it was really just mortifying. And I realized I was at the table, and there was a glass of water here. Uh, and I reached for it, and my hand was shaking so hard I put it back under the table because, you know, that wouldn't do to. <laughs> uh, and it, uh, it, it was a grilling. I mean, there were those that were supportive, and the tide was turning a bit, but nevertheless, it, uh, there was 
a grilling uh, from those that had supported the narrative that it was somehow the ambassador and his CIA wife that were scheming to undermine the president and this whole notion that uh, maybe the nuclear threat was played up. And this was very much like what we saw with Snowden. Uh, you know, there's the administration trying to sell the war and you know, use you as the diversion, you know, the beautiful mm, yeah. uh, undercover, the beautiful glorified secretary and her ambassador husband uh, and to deflect attention from their packaging and mm -hmm. selling of the war. Mm -hmm. Now with Snowden, very similarly, mm -hmm. the media was consumed with, oh, he's in Hawaii, where is he now? He's in, yeah. in Hong Kong, oh, is he gonna stay in Russia, you know, in the, in the airport for the rest of his life? Instead of focusing on the issue that really concerns you, which is, what is the NSA doing? How much yeah. are they mining? I mean, we now know that they're, they're <laughs> learning about you know, cell phone direction. Social uh, media. Social media. You know, Metadata. Networks that mm -hmm. we have. And you know better than anybody how that information can be used to discredit somebody <laughs> who is not you know, in favor with the government. Indeed, uh, at, uh, Snowden really is irrelevant. He really was sort of a shiny ball that pe the media was following for a while. What we, what we really need to have is a very robust conversation about the appropriate balance between security and privacy. Thus far, our political leaders have essentially told us, trust us, yeah. don't worry, we're keeping you safe. It's fine, you don't yeah. need to worry. And Americans, when, as these revelations have sort of rolling revelations have come out over the last uh, four or five months, uh, there was uh, a sense of, come on, I'm not a terrorist, what do I care? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's fine, They're, and it's, bec I think there was that muted reaction initially because we as a society have been so used to our privacy being eroded. First, we do it voluntarily through social media, and secondly, with online marketers that, you know, Amazon said, well, you bought these shoes, you'll really love these sandals, right? <laughs> and we, oh. yeah, right, the ads that pop up that are targeted to you. And, uh, but what people are not thinking about are the unintended consequences of this, mm -hmm. from political chicanery, right. which Joe and I know something about, to uh, overzealous prosecutors, to heaven forbid a, a sense that uh, a part of the government that maybe uh, would turn tyrannical and using information as power. Absolutely. And you can never go back from the edge of that. Right.